Um, so yeah, my name is Moshe Zadka. Uh, Corbidism.com is my website where you can find every way of reaching out to me, known to humankind. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about cast internet retrospectives. Um, I do want to start with an acknowledgement of country. I live in Belmont in the uh, peninsula, which is the ancestral homeland of the Ramaytush Ohlone people. So before we talk about uh, how to do better incident retrospectives, let's talk about what's incidents. So for something to be an incident, it has to be bad, right? If something good happens, we prefer it to keep happening, I guess, right? So it has to be bad. It has to be unplanned, right? If you plan to do something bad and then there's something bad happened, that's okay, you did it, right? There's not the thing that, like, you know, maybe you did a planned maintenance and something bad happened as a result of that. That's unplanned because you did not plan for it. But if you plan to shut down the website and the website shut down, then that's okay. That's you know, as intended. Um, and the last thing is that you have to be willing to stop that from happening last time. You have to be willing to expend some effort from saying, I do not want things like that to happen again. If you're not an, it's not an incident, it's something that happens, right? Like, you know, I, I, I only care if, like, you know, if, if this is something that you want to care enough about to, to expend at least some effort. So, okay, um, now we've all settled. This is what is going to be an incident for the purposes of this talk. So what is an incident retrospective? Uh, some people still call it post-mortem, which you should not, so please change your terminology. Um, so uh, there's two parts in a retrospective, right? One part is analysis. We want to understand exactly what happened for the incident, exactly what went on while for the incident to occur, how did the bad thing happen? And uh, well, you know, like, well, well, this is fun and interesting. The reason we do that is because we want to improve. I want to make sure that in the future, um, you know, it will be less bad. And this is important. It doesn't mean that we want to prevent it necessarily. Like, of course, it would be good if we prevented it. But we want it to be less bad somehow, right? We want it to less take t to uh, be maybe um, resolve faster, maybe have less impact, right? It's not just about prevention. Anything that we can do to improve that thing in the future. So. Why do we do that? Well, because we want to do better, right? Like, you know, incidents are bad things. We don't want bad things to happen. Uh, so we do incident retrospectives to make the bad things less bad. Now comes like me digging into a little bit of history. What is root cause analysis? So the idea of root cause analysis is, okay, something bad happened. Well, why did I just find the original cause why it happened, the thing that caused the whole chain of events to lead to the bad side, and then eliminate the cause. Whatever the original cause was, we fix the cause, and that's it, right? Like we fix the cause, none of the chain of events will happen, nothing bad will happen. That looks interesting, but that was kind of naive, right? First of all, there can be more than one cause, right? Like, you know, maybe uh, for the website to shut down, two, two switches have to be flipped. Which one is the cause? Well, both of them. If you don't flip both of them, then the website's still up, right? If you flip one of them, website's still up. You flip two, so you can't say that one of them is more of a cause than the other. Both of them are equally caused, right? So there can be more than one cause. Uh, it can also be too specific. Right, like we talked about, like you know, you eliminate the cause and the whole chain of events doesn't come. But what if five other things can all cause, like you know, the you know third thing down the chain of events, and then the chain of events go, then, and so you eliminate that, and then you know a week later that happens and leads to the same chain of events, and that thing happened into the same chain of events. Maybe the problem is the chain. Maybe the problem is not like the thing. And last, and I think most interesting, and not just most interesting, but like almost always that is the actual truth, it's not necessarily within your boundary of control, right? If um, I run a social media site and there's like a, a soccer match and someone scores a goal and everybody goes on the social media site to say that like this guy scored the goal uh, and that crashes my site, I understand the original cause, the guy scored the goal. But I can't do anything about it, right? There's gonna be a soccer match tomorrow. It like presumably, you know, someone else will score a goal. That's beyond my my control uh, uh, thing, right? So while I can understand 
quite possibly like what is the original cause and if you think about it like what is the original cause of everything right the big bang but you can't do anything about it it already happened right like you know you, you're stuck with like you know whatever you have now right so it's very easy to kind of come up with like you know causes for the cause for the causes but if you can't do anything about it then it's it's kind of not relevant right it, it might be in, interesting right when i analyze the incident it's definitely important to say well they scored a goal and like, you know, then this happened, then it happened, right? Like this is extremely important for the analysis, right? But it doesn't mean that I can eliminate it. So it's not relevant to do a root cause analysis. So people started to come up with, well, you know, we're kind of like, you know, doing a contributing cause analysis and then we'll figure things out and kind of basically like at least the original root cause analysis for its faults, it was a clear methodology. You knew what to do. It was bad, but it was clear. Then people kind of start patching it and be like, yeah, you do that, you kind of patch it with that. It's extremely unclear what you actually have to do. And so instead of like starting to patch more and more your root cause analysis until it kind of works, um, why not actually like, you know, come up with a process that works? And for a process that works, you maybe need like to go to a field where people actually study how these things work. And that field is called system theory, where um, people understand how complicated systems work and sometimes don't work. And that's maybe a useful thing to uh, apply here. Okay, so um, I can't teach you all system theory in like, you know, whatever time I have. I can at least uh, mention the concept of system theory, like explain what they are so you understand like how they apply to this. So you, a system is made of components. The components interact somehow. Um, a component is something that you control, right? You are building the components, you're putting them together to make a whole system. Um, those components, though that system, it lives in an environment. That environment influences its behavior, right? If things are colder, then maybe the components will, you know, behave a little bit different. If things are warmer, the components will behave a little bit different. This, that's the environment, that's on the system. Uh, and the difference between the environment of a system is that you don't control the environment. So um, inside a component, there is something called a control. A control is something that takes an input. That input can come from another component or from another control and component from the system, or it can uh, take the input from the environment. And it does something, right? Um, I think maybe if you want like the best metaphor for control that I want all of you to have in your mind whenever I say control, think of a thermostat, right? It's a component, possibly in a bigger system, right? Um, if it's too hot, then it will switch the, um, switch the uh, um, uh, electrical circuit on. If it's too cold, it will switch the electrical circuit off, right? So it's the input is the temperature, the output is circuit on or off. Okay, that's like the typical example of a control. That's the kind of the image I want all of you to have in your mind whenever I say control, right? It's stuff like that. Uh, now, a system is designed to do something. And uh, instead of kind of talking about what it should do, uh, we can talk about the last. The last is when um, you get the behavior you didn't want from the system, right? You wanted your website to be up and it's not up, right? That's undesired behavior, that's a loss, right? That means that the, the system is not behaving as you wanted it. A safety control is a control which is designed to prevent loss. Okay, so safety control is a control, you put it in the system, and its goal is to behave in such a way that will prevent some sort of loss. A hazard, Right. Um, that's and, and and here you can I, I can you know kind of when I first saw that I was like well it's just cheating right the hazard is like what they're calling the root cause right uh, but it's not like the hazard is very very specifically defined the hazard is an input to the system or some state of the environment which led to a problem right so that's a very clear thing right we're not talking about um, okay so these are like basically general concepts from system theory. Um, they're not necessarily just uh, involved in retrospectives. Uh, whenever you design a system, all of these things will be applicable. Now let's talk about 
uh, specific concepts I need for you, the retrospective. So the first thing I want uh, in the retrospective is to have a timeline. What happened, right? So um, as you can imagine from the word timeline, right? I expect it to be ordered in the order of like the time. You should choose like you know one time zone. It might make sense to choose UTC, but if everyone is in California, it, it's perfectly fine to choose US Pacific as long as you're very clear. And even if something happened in India at that point, you just translate it to like the California uh, time. Um, obviously, uh, you want to listen what happened, when, um, then you want to describe the loss, right? You want to be clear what the system did that you didn't like, right? This is really important, right? Because here you don't want to describe like, you know, the behavior of the system. You want to describe what you didn't like about the system, right? What hurt you, right? This is extremely important because when we talk about how to prevent or reduce it, this is what we're going to prevent or reduce, right? We don't want to prevent or reduce something in the middle of it. Um, and the last analysis is the causal path that leads from the hazard to the last, right? And that's kind of similar to what you would do with a root cause analysis, yes. It, it means that you do have to figure out the causes, right? Like, you know, figuring out the causes is not gone just because you're not doing the root cause analysis. You still have to understand how your system functions, right? Uh, but now we understand exactly what causal path we're talking about. We want to go from the hazard, from some input to the system, and how it resulted in some loss, okay? Uh, but that doesn't mean that that's what we fix, right? This is just part of the analysis that we have to do to make sure that we understand what actually happened, right? So this is kind of the more, um, I feel like CAS in general um, has kind of two parts, which is the uh, descriptive and prescriptive. Uh, and this is the descriptive part of, of the CAS. You have to make sure that you describe exactly what happened during the incident. Okay, but uh, let's say that you know what happened during the incident. Great, uh, but that's not done, right? Now uh, you need to understand kind of, and now, well, this is not, this is kind of on the border of descriptive or prescriptive, but usually I think of it as a prescriptive side because you've already figured out what happened actually. So when you talk about safety control failure, you need to talk about like, you know, you need to first identify a safety control, which is not just, uh, um, identification based on what it does. It's identification based on what it was supposed to do, right? Which is why I think it's more on the prescriptive side. And so for each safety control, right? Like you had an incident. That means you had loss, right? Which means none of the safety controls engage the way you plan them to engage, right? So every safety control, by definition, once you have reached the point where there's an incident, <clears throat> once you have reached the point where there's an incident, uh, it did not prevent the loss. And you need to be clear why didn't prevent the loss? Now, it might be that like for some safety controls, they're just not relevant to that part, right? If the loss was kind of, you know, in this side of the system and these safety controls were designed to prevent loss that, you know, is caused by that part of the system, that's why they didn't engage. But you need to be clear for each safety control why that safety control did engage and prevent the loss. Um, and that means each safety control has a problem. So you need to suggest what we can do, what, how can we fix that safety control to engage? Again, not necessarily four of them. If it doesn't make sense for that safety control to prevent a similar problem, then it's not relevant. But for every safety control where it makes sense, you want to suggest, okay, this is what we want to fix about the safety control. This is how we want to improve that safety control. Um, very common, especially if you're just starting with CAST, that you'll be in this place a lot, be like, well, um, I don't think we actually have any safety controls or like, you know, we have a safety control, which is like, you know, one alert, right? Um, so especially when you start out with CAST, you'll realize that like once you have an incident, you didn't plan any safety controls in place. Well, this is a good time, as any, to actually figure out which safety controls are missing. Uh, so you want to suggest any reasonable safety controls. And um, often the things that like a bit a higher level, right? Um, what kind of things do we need to do to change in our process, right? For example, why didn't we figure out that these uh, uh, problems can happen in our safety controls, right? Why didn't we design any safety controls? What kind of things can we do at a bit of a higher level that's beyond just a safety control 
to uh, improve the stuff. So what, which kind, what, what kind of systemic problems do we have? Uh, and again, uh, especially when you start out with cast, you'll find out you're spending a lot of time here. And that's okay. That's the whole goal. Um, sometimes uh, it results from incorrect assumptions, right? Sometimes the systemic issues is that uh, um, you design your system for like about a quarter of the load it's handling, and it's already kind of like, you know, in its day-to-day -day operations, very close to uh, collapsing, and that's kind of the systemic problem, right? It's like, you know, reaching its limits. So um, you know, there can be all kinds of systemic problems that you might have. Um, so now you take all of these things that you've done, Right, like you figured out um, which safety controls need to be fixed, which safety controls need to be added, what kind of systemic problems you want to fix. Um, and now we want to make an improvement plan. Right, so until now, things were at a pretty high level. This is like, you know, the right thing to do with the safety control. Now, the improvement plan has to be uh, a list of items. Each of those items has to be concrete and has to be specific. Right, so concrete means that you can do something about it, right? It has to be action, actionable, right? Like, you know, it can't be like, you know, um, people should uh, um, never uh, go to sleep after they uh, get an alert because that's not actionable. How are you gonna, what, what are you doing to that, to do that, right? Um, specific means that you have to be clear about when it's done, right? Like, so it, it should be extremely clear uh, the state before it's done and after it's done. Can someone else confirm that whatever you've suggested, whatever concrete uh, uh, modification you're suggesting has actually been done, right? So that's specific. Uh, it should be a list of those, right? So you have a list of, you know, can be anywhere from like, you know, one to 50, right? Or maybe more, but dear God, that sounds uh, uh, scary. <laughs> um, of, of items in the improvement plan. And that's the retrospective uh, document, right? Uh, and this is kind of the main, for me, artifact of the CAST, right? So uh, CAST, by the way, stands for um, Causal Analysis Based on System Theory. Um, so that's CAST. Um, and, and the main artifact is the improvement plan, but also like everything that goes beyond the improvement plan to kind of explain why this improvement plan is the one that makes sense. Um, so the best time to do cast is not when you're undergoing an incident, right? The best time is to kind of plan your uh, cast process, knowing that you will have an incident and having that. So have your uh, process ready for when you have a cast, you know, figure out who does it, how, where do they put the cast document, how do they get feedback on it, all these kind of annoying things, right? You can make a lot of choices, right? It doesn't matter if you put it in Google Docs and have people um, look at comments or like, you know, print it out and have people uh, go over it with red markers. But you need to be, uh, again, to have a very clear process, what you're gonna do. Um, and then you need to actually apply it, right? So now you've made your plan. After the incident is remediated, this is very important, by the way, uh, it's very tempting to like start the incident analysis once the incident is going. Don't do that, right? If, you, if you're worried that you'll lose some data then keep it you know, do the minimum you need to like, you know, kind of copy a file aside or stuff like that, but no need to analyze the incident while it's ongoing. But after the incident, uh, you need to assign a specific person that should be like exactly one person who's responsible for coming up with the retrospective documentation. Now it doesn't mean that that person needs to be an expert, right? Um, hopefully they can ask other people, they can interview people, they can ask for feedback uh, even before they write a doc, but they're the person responsible for that. In fact, it's often very good if that person is not an is not an expert, a because they'll have a fresh set of eyes on the system, and b because this is one of the best ways to kind of teach newcomers about the system. The best way to understand the system is how it breaks. Um, and then, especially because like you know this was one person, you want to make sure that everybody involved in that system reviews the retrospective doc, right? Uh, gets a chance to say. That's not correct. That, first of all, like, you know, that's not what happened in the timeline. Or um, even if you do that, uh, that's actually not going to help because of some other things, right? Like have people kind of who, you know, are using, are implementing the system day to day, give feedback on that process. And basically, um, once everybody signed off, right, once everybody agrees that, yes, this retrospective document captures the best we can do 
right? Captures like, you know, we don't have any um, anything to improve about it. You want to act, you want to actually like follow your improvement plan. Um, and finally, like, I think that CAS itself is in some sense also a safety control, right? CAS itself is a system designed to reduce loss, right? And uh, because of that, like the way you apply CAST should also be part of your um, of your ongoing stuff, right? If the process is uncomfortable, if it's hard to follow, uh, whether the improvement plan uh, is is done, if too many items in the improvement plan in the improvement plan never get done because it's it's those are bad suggestions, this is something you wanna revisit and figure out how you can do better in your next cast analysis. Uh, and um, I think that's it. So I think maybe I have some time for uh, questions. Sure. Yeah. Right. Well, so again, um, when 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 I think of like you know part when you describe the last right, um, you can say well you know the last was that like system was down for two hours, and one of the and, and in the timeline it's clear that like the reason it was down for two hours is because between the time it went down and the time it fixed, you did a lot of like, you know, kind of chasing after red herrings. And then one of the um, safety controls that you're gonna add is something that, you know, clearly gives you a good diagnosis, right? Again, like I said, the safety control is not something that necessarily prevents loss, it's something that, you know, reduces loss, right? Something that gives you a clear diagnostics so you know where to go uh, and saves you, you know, from like, you know, two hours of digging around red herrings is also a safety control, right? And that is a missing safety control in that case. So, um, yeah, sure. Um, so the question was, uh, why can't you just uh, test all possible inputs? Um, so there's a few answers here, right? Uh, one is that the number of inputs uh, can easily be uh, infinite or infinite for all practical purposes, right? Even for fairly small systems, right? Like, you know, kind of like, you know, three web servers and a, and a load balancer between them. Uh, you know, like the combinatorial explosion of all possible HTTP requests that can do stuff is like very quickly uh, goes out of hand, right? Um, but... Um, one thing that is uh, a little bit like that, um, there's kind of a, a, a cousin, if you will, of CAST uh, called STAMP, which I highly recommend uh, looking into, um, which is basically CAST without the incident. Uh, so STAMP is a design process that at the point you design a system, you have not had an incident yet, you kind of try to imagine uh, potential losses and why safety controls to add. Uh, the reason I usually start with CAST is that it's easier to convince people uh, to um, respond to incidents before they had incidents. If you're already doing CAST for a while, right, and you know that you're doing it pretty well, next time you design a new system, you can use your expertise kind of like in running CAST to basically run STAMP. Uh, you can, you should Google that and like, you know, uh, find how to do STAMP, right? I'm not gonna, but it's basically like it, it Counts on the very similar skills to the one you've uh, already built in your team uh, doing CAST to kind of say, well, let me also like try to kind of think of potential incidents and, you know, and in, in, in just add enough safety controls so that we'll already have some of those in place. Uh, so I think maybe that was slightly beyond your uh, thing, but I think it's, it's close to like, you know, what you talk about, like, you know, how, how can you uh, start doing better before you have an incident? I think there's a question in the back.
Ouais. A few great questions. So let me just repeat them. Um, so the first one was, uh, when should you have the incident retrospective? Obviously, it's good to have it uh, soon after, but sometimes you need to gather some data. And also, um, how do you balance writing stuff during the incident? So, like I said, during the incident, uh, you should be focusing on remediating the incident. Um, if you do think, oh, wow, this is going to be like really good in the incident re retrospective. Maybe take a screenshot or save a file, but don't worry too much about it, right? Just keep them on your laptop where they are uh, and, and count on the fact that, like, you know, when someone does incident retrospective and they come interview you, uh, you'll be able to give them the file and they'll be super happy about it. So that's like the second part, uh, which I answered first because I think the more interesting question is the first part that I want to focus on. Uh, when should you do it? And the answer is that usually I recommend uh, assign someone to do it as you know one of the highest priority uh, is the next business day, right? So let you know let people rest, let people go home, relax, right? Uh, God forbid if it was a weekend, let them have the rest of the weekend at least in peace. Um, the next business day, whenever that might be, you need to assign someone to do that, and that should be the highest priority. Now, how long should it take? Well, it should take how long it takes, right? In the sense that, like, you know, uh, you need to make sure you've gathered enough data. You need to make sure that you have an accurate timeline. Until you do that, you don't have a retrospective in hand. Um, that said, um, you do you need to give some guidance. Uh, and, you know, again, like, you know, you, you can kind of argue about, like, you know, exactly the level of detail that people should get to. In general, I say, you know, you'll always be limited right your timeline will always be approximate your your knowledge will always be partial your your kind of accompanying accompanying tables will always have missing pieces right at the point where you feel like you're like you know just you know you did enough investigations and like doing more investigation is just taking a long time that's the point you should probably like you know kind of take a pause and say this is probably good enough um often why they suggest an improvement plans is maybe if like you know a specific thing was unclear part of the improvement plan should be figure that part out right like you know spend and that can be a separate kind of assignment and a separate person that's designed to to, to understand exactly what fails there like you know I, I know that like you know we ran this command it's supposed to create a file and the file wasn't there right and and you know you can say okay that's that's all we know right now We've done enough research. We know that this is what happened. Uh, we're not really sure why. And this is part of the improvement plan. We need better uh, analysis of that part so that to, to understand uh, exactly what went wrong. Uh, so hopefully that was kind of a bit meandering, but kind of around answering your question. Oh, great. Well, thanks, Moshe.